welcome to the second video on analyzing graphs and in this video we are going to be looking at a more complicated function than the first function that we looked at. The first function was a polynomial and this time we're going to look at this rational function. So this function we're going to restrict the domain to be between negative 2 and 2 and if you look here we definitely do not want to let our t be 1 or negative 1 because that would give us a 0 in the denominator. So our domain is from negative 2 to 2 with the exception of 1 and negative 1. So remember the different things that we are going to look for. We're going to look for those x-intercepts. That's where it crosses the x-axis and those occur where f of x equals 0. You're going to look for the y-intercept. That's where it crosses the y-axis and to find that you find f of 0. Look for the stationary points. Those are the maximum and minimum values of the function. Those occur when f prime is 0. The singular points, those are the corners or vertical tangents. Those occur where f prime of x does not exist. Now one thing to notice about this particular function is because 1 and negative 1 are restricted from our domain, those won't be possible singular points. So they'll, it'll show up like they could be, but because those are restricted from our domain and our function isn't defined there, it's not going to be a singular point. Inflection points, these are the places where the graph changes concavity, and you find those by taking the second derivative, set it equaling zero and solving. We'll look for behavior near the places where our function is undefined, so we're going to be looking at what's going on near one and negative one. And finally, if it's appropriate, you'll be looking for ending behavior. So what does the graph do as x approaches positive or negative infinity? On this graph, our domain is restricted between negative 2 to 2. So we won't have to do this ending behavior part. So let's start with part A. We're supposed to find the x and y intercepts. So remember from the previous page, the x intercepts occur where our f of x is 0. So we're trying to solve 0 equals t squared plus 1 over t squared minus 1. And so actually it's probably more appropriate to call these t intercepts because our variable is t and not x. So if we look at this function, we have this fraction that's supposed to be equaling 0, and if we have a fraction that equals 0, the only way that can happen is if that numerator equals 0. You can't have the, the denominator equaling 0 just makes it undefined, so it's only the numerator that really counts. So you can think about, you know, clearing the fractions, but essentially what this tells us is t squared, we want to know where does t squared plus 1 equals 0. So t squared is going to be non-negative. It could be 0, but it can't be um, a negative number because if it is, if t is negative, we square it, we get a positive number. So t squared plus 1, this is actually going to be greater than or equal to 1. So there's no way for this thing to equal 0. Another way to look at that, if you move the 1 over on the left you get t squared equals negative 1. When you try to take the square root you'd get t equals the square root of negative 1. This is not a real number. This is an imaginary number, a complex number. So there are no x-intercepts. So now let's find the y-intercept. So the y-intercept that occurs where we have f of 0. So we're going to have 0 squared plus 1 over 0 squared minus 1. So that's going to be 1 over negative 1. So that is negative 1. So we have the point 0, negative 1. Now let's find the stationary points. So for stationary points, we need to solve f prime of x equals 0. So if we go through and find our f prime, we're going to need to use the quotient rule. So we're going to have 2t times t squared minus 1 minus 2t times t squared plus 1 over t squared minus 1 squared. And if you simplify that, you're going to end up with negative 4t 
over t squared minus 1 squared. I recommend that you pause and make sure that it, you do see how that simplifies to, to negative 4t over t squared minus 1 squared. Okay, so if we want this thing to equal 0, then again, we have a fraction equaling 0. The only way that can happen is if that numerator equals 0. So really, what we have here is negative 4t equals 0, which means our t has to equal 0. So we're looking at that same point right there. So this y-intercept turns out to be a stationary point. Moving on, let's find the singular points, if there are any. So here is our derivative right here and when we're looking for singular points we're looking for where would this not make sense so you're looking for are there any values that would make our denominator equal zero and we do have two values where that would happen that would happen at t equals one or t equals negative one but if you remember that these were restricted from our domain so we end up with no singular points because the two that were possible aren't in our domain. Okay, endpoints. So remember, our domain was restricted to be between 2 and 2, so our endpoints are at negative 2 and 2. Now let's see if we can find the inflection points. In order to find the inflection points, we're going to need to know that second derivative. So up here is our first derivative. So if we go to take the derivative of this, we're going to have negative 4 times t squared minus 1 squared minus negative 4t, so it's going to be plus 4t. Take the derivative of the denominator, we're going to have 2 times t squared minus 1 so I bring that exponent down in front. I have t squared minus 1 to the 1. And then derivative of the inside is 2t. And this is all over t squared minus 1. And now this is going to be raised to the fourth. Now the simplification on this can be a, a little bit tricky, but let me show you one, one little thing here. Notice how I have a t squared minus 1 here, and I have two of them here. Also, I have a 4 here and I have a 4 here. It's going to make our life a little bit easier if we factor those things out. So I'm going to factor out a 4 and a t squared minus 1. And in this first, I'm going to have a negative. I'm going to have a t squared minus 1. And then over here, I still have this 2t and another 2t. So that's going to be plus 4t squared. I've used up this t squared minus 1. And this is over t squared minus 1 to the fourth. We can cancel one of those. Let's see how I have a t squared minus 1 here. And I have four copies here. So I can cancel that. And I can simplify in here. This is going to be 4. Here I have 4t squared, and then that's going to be minus a t squared, so that's 3t squared. And it's a minus 1 here, and then there's another negative, so that's going to be a plus 1. Okay, so this is our second derivative. Okay, now the goal here was to find out where that second derivative equals 0. So we are trying to find where 4 times 3t squared plus 1 over t squared minus 1 cubed equals 0. And again, that denominator does not come into play. It's the numerator that counts. So I just need to know where 4 times 3t squared plus 1 equals 0. Okay divide out that 4, so it's really only the 3t squared plus 1 equals 0. Now remember, t squared is going to be at least 0. It can't be negative. So if I take 3 times something that's 0 or positive and add 1 to it, this thing is actually always going to be greater than 0. It's actually going to be greater than or equal to 1 
because this 3t squared has to be greater than or equal to 0. So there's no way that I can make this thing equal 0, so there are no inflection points. Now one thing that's important to note is just because there's no inflection points doesn't mean that our graph never changes concavity. We have that um, two, those two places where our function isn't defined at t equals 1 and negative 1 and so it's quite possible that at those vertical asymptotes our function is going to change concavity. So let's build our table. So the things that we're going to need in our table are 0, we're going to need negative 2 and positive 2. These are the points that we're going to need to classify in terms of mins and maxes. If we wanted to, we could also include the x and y intercepts in our table, but um, I'm going to leave them out here. Okay, so in order to build our table, let's first put our function in our y1. So I have it in my y1 here, and then I want to complete the table. So I'm going to go to the table feature. So I have my three values in my table. I have 0, negative 1, I have negative 2, and it looks like 1.6667. So I, I bet that I know what that value is. I bet that there's a denominator of 3. But let's remind ourselves how we can find that as a fraction. If I go quit out of here, I have my function in my y1. So if I go vars, y vars, function, y1, and plug in 2, I get my 1.6667. So if I press math and then 2 fraction, I get 5 thirds. Okay, now let's look at our graph. In order to graph, the first thing I need to do is set my window. So my x min and my x max are going to match my endpoints of my interval. An x scale of 1 is going to be good. And my y values here go from, the ones in my table are, are really small. So we could say make our graph go from say negative 10 to 10 and see if that gives us what we need to see go by a y scale of 2 maybe, or actually let's go by a y scale of 1. So here's my graph. And let's classify our points. So if we look over here at 0, negative 1, that looks like a, a relative max because that's a high spot on our function. So this is a relative maximum. And then here at negative 2 and positive 2, we have some symmetry going on. But these look like low spots on our function. So these are both relative mins. We know that they aren't absolute mins because we can tell that our, our graph continues down this way and down this way as we get close to 1 or negative 1. And we know that we don't have an absolute max because we shoot off towards infinity on either side of 1 and negative 1 here. So there is no absolute min and no absolute max. Okay, so in this next part, it says indicate the behavior near points where the function is not defined. So remember, our function is not defined here at negative 1 and over here at 1. And even though our graph doesn't actually show it, we have a vertical asymptote going on there. So I'm drawing in dotted lines. When you graph this on your calculator, it, it, it could be that your grapher has a line going there, but it's not really an asymptote on your grapher. What the grapher is doing when it goes to graph, it calculates different y values and then it connects the dots. And sometimes the, graph, the graphing calculator will connect dots where it really shouldn't. So it might find a y value here and find a y value here and then connect them with a vertical line or a somewhat vertical line, that is not an asymptote. And so you, you definitely don't want to produce a graph like that for your teacher because they'll, they'll know that you're, you're not understanding what your calculator is doing. Okay, so as t 
approaches, let's say, negative 1 from the left, our f of t, our y values, are approaching. So as we're coming in here from the left, our y values are getting really big. So we're going off towards positive infinity. As t approaches negative 1 from the right, so I have a little subscript of plus this time. So from the right, we're going down this way, and we're zooming off towards negative infinity. Let's look at 1. So as t approaches 1 from the left, our y values shoot off towards, so as we're coming in from the left here, our y values are getting very large and negative, very negative, so we're going to zoom towards negative infinity, and as t approaches 1 from the right, our y values are going to tend towards positive infinity. Okay, finally it says indicate the behavior at infinity. So this particular problem, we're restricting our domain between negative 2 and 2, so this particular problem, this question, is not really appropriate. So in our homework problem, there's going to be an option where you might say we have a restricted domain, so our domain doesn't tend towards negative infinity or positive infinity. That's it for this video. Stop by for another one.